All right, here we are, another episode of Mugs and Hugs. I'm Jennifer Osger. I'm Heidi Marlinghouse. And today we have Lavana Roth. It is such an honor, famous for Ignite Your Shine. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Mugs and Hugs, who wouldn't want to be on that? <laughs> exactly. I, we've got um, my mug here. I was saying that um, everyone has a beautiful red for the holidays. And so I've got my red in my mug and you have your mug. Oh, <laughs> you've got two of them. Double fisted water, mugs. Water and tea. <laughs> so, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So the way we like to introduce people is to give you an opportunity to say to everyone, like if people were to look up Lavana Roth on Google or whichever platform they, they want to look, um, what would they find? Where, where would you pop up and in what ways? I don't know, should we try it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's always a little bit frightening. You know, is it, I remember the first time I did pull myself up and I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> like, I don't know, there's this much information. So it's always fascinating, but I'm, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Uh, I've, I've pulled back from, to be honest with you, social media quite a bit, not at the level I was doing it. Um, but Twitter is definitely something you'd find me there. But my background has always been, especially when I talk about Google, Google has been, I was a teacher for elementary and secondary and absolutely loved it. Never planned on doing anything different, but you know, life likes to throw different things your way. And I'm someone who has always said that I don't want to ever regret what I didn't try. And so I try to live my life that way. So I had an opportunity to step out of education just as I was getting ready to interview to become an administrator and I stepped out and one thing led to another, some great experiences and some not so great experiences. And all of that though, it plays a part in where I am today as an educational consultant slash motivational speaker slash whatever else you might find out there. So it's been a really, really neat adventure and journey that I didn't plan, but I absolutely love. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, Ignite Your Shine is pretty much your big calling card, yes? Is that? Yeah, I would say that it was originally I was all into the brain science and how the brain learns and I still am, but I wasn't seeing a lot of the things I knew should be happening. It's, you know, I have eight books out there all on how the brain learns strategies that teachers can implement in the classroom to not only align to how the brain learns, but also to engage students. However, I wasn't still seeing that impact that should have been there. And so when I took a step back, I went, wait a minute, this is actually not about the the brain like it is well it's about the brain but it's not about the instruction at this point we need to actually take a step back and say okay if the brain is going to learn then the brain has to be in a state of learning and that is what is now often referred to as sel at the time i didn't know that term but now i can put that under that classification of social emotional learning and so ignite your shine is the exact thing that we're, we're going for to put the brain to a state of learning to then for it to be able to learn Excellent. And that, that aligns with what we do so much of, and we can't wait to get into a little bit of that throughout some of our questions. What we do is we have five questions. They're strength-based, they're positive, uh, designed to really elevate some conversations. And what we'll be doing is uh, going back and forth, asking you the questions so you can um, you know, really take your energy where you want it to go. And we'll see what comes up from the conversation. Awesome. Love it. Ready? Yes. Great. Yeah. And I'm going to try not to get like too into it with you, Lavana, because you are right up my alley. <laughs> hey, just, just telling us like how we could find you on the internet. I was like, oh, she's like into SEL and brain science and let's go. We can have this conversation for eight hours. So I'll work on, on narrowing that down. <laughs> All right. No worries. So I'm curious to know, since you've done, I mean, you've done a variety of things, right? You've been in the classroom, you were getting ready to be an administrator, which I find uh, incredible that you, you stepped out and did something different from there. Uh, and now you're actually helping educators in their classroom. So out of all the things that you've done, what are the proudest moments that you found doing your work and what do you contribute to your success? Wow, so I would say, proudest moments. This is one of those, it's so funny because I encourage everybody else to talk about themselves and that that's not arrogance. That's, those are facts and things that you embrace about that greatness of yourself. But it's always, you know, one of those where I too have to put those things into practice. So for me, it's 
it's stepping out. I, I would say it was one of the biggest things, even though I've always been a little bit of a risk taker for when I stepped out, I had done no consulting. So I was stepping into a complete unknown and I had no mentor to support. And financially, I really, to be honest, couldn't do it. I mean, I was married to my husband, but he has his own background and, and things that he was, this is my second marriage, his second marriage. So, you know, we're bringing things to the table. And so financially, there was no way we could do this without my income. And I remember when I came home one day and I was in a really toxic environment um, where I was working. I was screamed at and cussed out one minute. And then the next minute they were hugging me and saying, God put your life for a reason. We're so blessed to have you. And I thought you're, you're doing two totally different things here. And after, to be honest with you, crying quite a bit, I finally one day said, you know what? If they can run a company treating people like that, then I can run a company and treat people right. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. And, and it's funny because when I look back on every job that I did from education all the way up to the point of going into my own business, I can see how every single part played in a part of where I am today. So when you mention success, I, I do, I credit it to looking back to all the do's and to all the don'ts, whether it was in marketing, whether it was in sales, whether it was in following your ambition and your passion and every little, seriously, every role, every bit, it plays a part in where I am today. And I've just learned that you have to use that to your advantage, not to get drowned in it, not to say, oh, what was me? I can't believe that happened. But instead to say, what did I learn from it? What is the lesson, benefit and takeaway? And so to me, that's been, you know, some of the greatest accomplishments is that. And I remember, by the way, my husband, when I told him, I said, I'm, I'm jumping out. His words to me were, you better make it work because <laughs> we didn't have a choice, right? But there's also beauty in that. I didn't have a choice. Like if I truly wanted to do this and I knew that I could always go back to the classroom or go back and be an administrator, but that if it comes to that, no worries. But at the time I really wanted to give it a shot. And that was like 12 and a half years ago. So I am loving every step of the way. That's awesome. Um, I, I love your philosophy and your vision of, you know, taking all the hardships from the past and using those to elevate you and to grow. Um, I think that is the, you know, trademark of resilience. Oh, I, I would agree. You know, and believe me, there's times, you know, that I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Because it's not all easy. You know, I, it's funny. I have so many people who come to me and say, Lavana, how, how do I get to do what you do? How do I get into consulting? And my first question to them is, why do you want to get into consulting? And it's amazing some of the answers I get. Like the number one answer I get is I want to travel. So then I immediately say, why do you want to travel? Because like, I want to go see places. I'm like, okay, so here's the reality of what's going to happen Unless you're loaded and you don't need to worry about it, <laughs> then that's a little bit different. But let me just kind of walk you through what actually happens in that scenario. And it's, it's finally why, I, I guess it was about a year ago, I actually started Prime to Shine. And that's where I do teach people how to get into educational consulting. So we have a course, we have a membership site, we take people through everything and support them. Because I, going back to what I said before is that I didn't have a mentor and I've spent so, I mean, probably close to $100,000 at this point, trying to learn from other people. People didn't want to help. And it was just one of those that I thought, my goodness, it doesn't have to be this hard. So if I can teach others how to learn from my mistakes, that's huge. And so they're going to make their own, but you know, they're going to build their own resilience, like you said. But at the same time, if I can help fast forward that, then I want to. And you know, if it's, if it's easy, then it's not being done right. I mean, we don't grow when it's easy, right? And, and there should be times that it is easy because we need, we need a respite every now and then. But life isn't meant to be easy. Right. It's, we need to see it as a journey. It's not about this like easy path. It's a journey of ups and downs. And if we learn how to view that and embrace that, it's so much better. But there are times I have to remind myself of that too, especially during a pandemic. <laughs> so. Well, Two things is um, I love that whole questioning of why, why, and then it gets to that essence, right? To, to find out what's really driving their decisions, their behaviors. And the other thing that I, I kind of chuckle is like, oh, well, I want to be a consultant to see the world. It's like, well, you will. Lots of airports and lots of hotels and lots of boardrooms or, or you know conference rooms, but it's not like you're going to have an opportunity to like sightsee while you're a consultant, yes? Correct, absolutely, unless you build in the time. But then if you build in the time, you're not working, if you're not working, you're not being paid because you don't have an employer, employer, you are the employer at that point. So that's where I, you know, making that connection, exactly what you're saying is that connection between you can, you absolutely can do it. 
but you are now dividing, 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 dividing. And we can, you know, there's a whole lot to that. <laughs> so as you ladies know. <laughs> well, and in that, the why, the why, the why, and to, to really find that truth, you know, I'm wondering as far as your why and what you're most passionate about, especially right now with what's going on, you know, what is your big passion and your big why right now? My big why is I'm, my why is all around confidence. And it it has been for a long time. It's really taken me a long time to pinpoint what that is. And so originally for Shine, the word was smart. And that was because I was going after what we identify as smart in education. And someone said to me, right or wrong, someone said to me, Lavana, you will never change the definition of smart in education. Well, part of my personality went, hmm, watch me. (laughs) Like, let's go, let's bring it. I've got this part that will rise to that challenge. But then also there's some self-doubt going, well, what if they were right? And the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, it's not just going into smart because the reason I wanted smart is because I felt stupid in school. I had okay, great grades in elementary, started to decline in middle, high school, D's and F's on my report card, put on probation my first semester of college to be kicked out. I did not feel smart. I felt stupid. I didn't feel like I was enough. And then my, I get my students throughout the years of teaching anywhere from second through eighth grade. And I see the same thing in many of my students feeling stupid, not good enough, not smart. And then my daughter comes along and it's a similar situation. And all I keep thinking is everybody is gifted. Everybody is gifted. The question is how? And so I think we do a disservice in education when we put kids into the box of reading, writing, math, and science And we don't allow them to expand beyond that. Because to be honest with you, that's not what employers want. Employers are now saying, I can teach you what I need you to know. I can't teach you how to be empathetic, how to have compassion, how to be a problem solver, how to have resilience. Like those are the things that they don't want to take the time nor have the time to be able to teach. And so when I look at all of this, and especially when you talk about pandemic and seeing people's dreams crumble, or we've had different protests happening. You know, I look at the different protests and how marginalized, how we marginalize certain people. And that's who my heart goes out to. It's people who don't believe in themselves. And then that those of us that don't have an empathic view. So having that empathy towards others to even begin to understand their story. So you can see that I right now, like I could get on a major role and I can just feel the whole like body shifting because this is what I want to fight for is that I want every single person to believe in themselves. And here's the ultimate reason. If you believe in yourself, it rids, gets rid of professional jealousy. It um, diminishes or gets rid of bullying because the only reason someone bullies is to feel better. It doesn't work. So what do they do more of? They feel they bully more. Well, if you're confident in who you are, not arrogant, if you're confident in who you are, you don't have that. If we look at things like suicides outside of a chemical imbalance, those would diminish because when you believe in who you are, you have this whole... Aurora, like, I don't even know the word I'm trying to say, like, are around you of just feeling in that belief that you can do something. But it's when we feel minimal or we feel diminished or we feel we're not good enough, that's when all these other issues arise, including anxiety and depression. And so I'm not saying confidence is the ultimate answer, but I do think it's pretty much the ultimate answer. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to take a moment to let that sit. Because it's so profound, um, and I can I can see your passion. You you do light up when you talk about it, and to to realize that you know part of that is because it's your story, and and I think so many people can resonate with that. Um, you know, you you have a light about you. You shine, and to know that it was a journey, mm-hmm. right? So so thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And it started, you know, when I was younger too. And I grew up without knowing my biological father and I still don't know to this day, you know, and I, it was my mom and I for years. And at one point I, my mom and I even lived in a little building behind my grandpa's welding shop. And it was once a chicken coop and we lived there for three years, you know, so raised in the early years in poverty and just going through life of not having a father that was my biological father. I end up having a father, you know, that when my mom gets married down the road, but all those things reflect. And it's, I always have such empathy for others when they share their stories and it may not be the same as mine. It may be different and it probably is, but understand that we all come from things that hurt us. And we all come from things that we have to figure out how to work through. 
But again, I go back to what I said earlier is if we look at those things or what are the lesson, the benefit of the takeaway and how does that actually support us and help us? I think that's the big difference. And it's why I, I was giving a graduation commencement speech and it was the first time I ever told my full story about my father and growing up. And I had a young girl come up to me, one of the graduates. And by the way, this graduation commencement speech was at a school that they were the first in their families to graduate high school. So that was why the first time I shared my story, I had never spoke about it publicly. Many of my friends didn't know my story because I didn't talk about it. And I thought, I, I just want these kids to know that we all go through stuff, right? So I told her and she comes up to me and she's crying and she's like, can I hug you? And I said, of course you can. And so she gave me a big hug and she said, I'm just like you. And I said, in what way? And she said, my father walked out too. And she said, but I, what I learned from you today, and she then repeated my quote, which is moments don't define you, allow them to refine you. And that was something that I had to adopt for myself moments. And that's what we don't call them bad days or tough days that ignite your shine. We call them moments because literally it's a moment in time, even though it's long at times, it's still a moment. So moments don't define you unless you let them, right? Moments don't define you, allow them to refine you. Because one thing I do know for a fact is I am not the woman I am today if it hadn't been for those things in the past and how I use them. So it's the same for every single one of us. So Lavana, I mean, you told us already about the journey that you've been on and like how this all started for you. And the next question is really about, you know, how did, um, your journey with this topic begin, but you've, you've pretty much already approached that. So I'm going to shift it a little bit and ask you, like, how did you know, like, or when did you know that this was what you needed to focus on? Um, was it, is it the reason you became a teacher? Was it, you know, after you left education and became a, a consultant? Because you had said that you have been trying to pinpoint it for a while. And, and eventually you figured out it was working on confidence, right? Mm -hmm. um, myself, I became a teacher because I struggled in my youth. Very similar to you, not the same story, but very similar emotions and um, the process of finding myself and struggling with the grades, like not in the beginning, not in the early years, but as I got into my teens, right? It's a common pattern that we see among people. And I knew in my um, late teens, early twenties, that I wanted to help people get past that without having to go through much, so much hardship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've realized in my adulthood is that maybe they have to go through the hardship. Maybe they have to go through that process and build that resilience to get to the other side. Um, but there was, a, there was a light bulb moment when I knew I had to be a teacher and, and this was my goal. It wasn't for academics, but was for supporting the social emotional well-being of other humans. So for you, when, when did that like click for you? It was way later. So I will tell you, the re I didn't plan on getting into education. I was in psychology. And I was not doing well, which is funny because the majority of what I do now deals with psychology. Uh, but it's, I look back and at the time I was, I was about to flunk out, like I said. So I grabbed the university catalog because I wanted to take sign language. But in order to take sign language, you had to be an education major. So I became a teacher for the deaf and I learned to sign. And that's so when my GPA did a complete flip. And I found that I loved, 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 because what I was about was feeling that fulfillment, you know, showing or creating this impact and being able to see it. And so to have then the connection of students who felt like me or went through challenges that even whether they were different, like you said, that emotion is still there. It doesn't matter whether we have different stories or go through different ways. It comes down to the emotion that we can all connect to if we've had that emotion. And so for me, though, that ultimate point, though, was even though I loved the brain science and I loved working with teachers on engagement instruction and I still to this day but the reason SEL is because my daughter came along and when my daughter hit middle school and she was going actually into high school and is starting her freshman year wanting to become a plastic surgeon for children with deformities and by her sophomore junior year those two years she had horrible horrible experiences and things said to her by teachers that should never be said to a child and that immediately changed her path to not even want to finish high school. Thankfully she did. I didn't care if she went to college, but I did care that she finished high school. But what brings the emotion to me even to this day is the fact that she was ever even put in that position. And so that was the final trigger for me. Like I already knew where my heart was, 
but I have this amazing, amazing kid with such giftedness that was not being seen. And she felt stupid, felt like I'm not enough. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm a mom and I'm a mom that is promoting this. And that was such a heartfelt, hard time for me because I couldn't figure out if I can't get my own daughter to feel confident and believe in who she is. And that's when I realized again, I'm like, Levana, you, you can do so much externally, but a lot of this comes internally. You know, this is when you get to be proud of who you are and believe in who you are. And so all of that, I mean, that was the trigger for me, but that is why I want that. I have that drive of wanting to see others believe in themselves because we are truly unstoppable if we can harness that. I love that. I have a, um, I have a daughter who's a freshman this year and we moved in the middle of COVID and she doesn't know anybody here. Uh, although we're, we're working on changing that, but, um, and then I have a son who started sixth grade, started middle school this year. Um, and like I said before, I, I've learned that people need to go through their own experiences and go through their own hardships. But what I know I can do because of my skill set and my background is I can be there. I can be there to support. I can be there to teach, you know, the kids in my house have, have the tools that they need, whether they use them or not is up to them, but you know, I'm there to help them learn it and to let them know that they're normal and uh, we all go through this. So um, Sorry. your daughter's very lucky to have had you there with all the skill set that you have. Well, thank you. But you, you also said at the very powerful thing is that you can teach things, but what's the saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? So a lot of times I feel like that's a similar situation, but you know, she's a wonderful, healthy young adult now. She's about to turn 21. Oh my goodness, I have a 21 year old. When did this happen? I don't know when this happened. <laughs> but you know, I just, I see, I look at her now and she is using the tools, you know, but I think we all have to arrive at that time. Just like you know, it's, someone can preach to me all day long about what I should be doing to be healthy and eating and all that. But until I'm ready for that, I hear it. And matter of fact, I could tell you all about it, but it doesn't mean I'm doing it. And so learning to embrace that. And I think it's the same thing when we teach others tools, especially young adults or children. Mm. Well, we got a chance to know you through, I, you spoke at the Head Start conference and we did the kids first and now you're saying that you speak at commencement so you deal with educators early childhood educators um, students you speak so the fact that you have such a wide audience um, that's a setup to our next question is let's say you are taking a ride in an elevator you're going all the way up to the top floor and just before you take that journey up the doors open up and someone steps in the elevator with you and you're like, Hmm, here's an opportunity to have a conversation with them. Who do you envision most coming through that door? And what would you like to talk to them about? Wow. So I also do corporate talks. <laughs> so yes, I, we work with a whole gamut because shine is the framework. It's the principles within it and it works for, you know, if you're human, it works. So um, yeah, so now you really broaden that out. I was probably saying, I feel like a lot of people probably see the same answer, but I'm gonna say Oprah, you know? I actually have two people. I, Oprah is one of them and Ellen is the other. And so for me, like the first person who popped in my head was actually Ellen, you know, and having time, Ellen DeGeneres, so obviously I'm referencing, but um, just having that uh, moment to hear about her success and her hardships, because to me, someone who is definitely, and Oprah, the same thing, we can say the same thing. You look at uh, things that they have been through in their entire life, yet here they are. And for me, it's, it's to see that strong, independent woman and that you can create a life no matter what is, has happened or is happening. And so I think from them is where I learned to harness those lessons and those things that happen in life, but it's what you're going to do with it. That's really going to matter. And so I, gosh, I would, I don't even know what I'd ask them because I'd just be so, like, I would want them to just talk, you know, just like, just go, just let it all out to me. Um, but I think, you know, some of the things from sure, is like what I was just referencing is that, you know, how, how did you get through those things and what did you turn to? So I, almost if I think about the letters of shine, like I is inspired. So what was their inspiration to get through those moments? 
you know, how did they literally go through shine with us being self all about strengths, gifts, skills, and talents. And so what strengths did you pull on that you have and that you are using? And so I just, going through each of those, it would be th those kinds of questions. And it's funny that you asked that because I've had a couple of times now I've, I've met celebrities and I'm not someone who gets like all the clumped necessarily when I see them, but all I can think in my head, because I'm also, I have a high introvert side and I also, also have a shy side. Uh, but all I, when I see them is that I don't want to ask them the same question that everybody else asked them. You know, I just want to be that repeat. And so when it comes to like Ellen or Oprah, I think walking them through the letters of shine would really be immensely valuable. I love that so much. Um, A, you're wanting to listen to them as opposed to telling them stuff. So asking the questions, right? That's why we're asking you questions because we can benefit so much. And, you know, you were talking about confidence. You're talking to them and you are gifting them with your framework because you know the power of it and you believe in it. And, and I just, that is so exciting to me. I love that. I love that so much. Well, thanks, Jen. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And as I was listening to you talk about, you know, that they've been through hardships too and look where they've come and, and um, just like you, they have resilience, right? They have, they've taken those experiences and they've used them to elevate themselves today. But not everybody does that. And what we know is that people who are hurting turn around and hurt other people. And listening to your story about your daughter and her experiences with teachers even who were hurtful, um, you know, just makes me think that those teachers don't have the tools and those teachers are hurting. Uh, and the whole system is hurting. I mean, when I was, you know, in the classroom in education, that's what I saw. I saw a lot of hurting people without the skills um, and it was just a trickle effect and the kids are at the bottom of that trickle effect. And, and we're supposed to be all about the kids. So Lavana, how do we bring this conversation into the schools so that we can have more healing in the schools and more positive environment for our children? Well, I think using the SHINE framework is an easy start because it allows conversations to happen. And so I think sometimes when you come in with a vulnerable question, if somebody's not ready for that or they think it's fluff, they don't understand the psychology and the effects of what truly happens, that taking them through something that can anchor that and have some conversations and allow the depth of the conversation to happen over time as people settle in and get a little bit more safe with it, um, I think Shine actually allows that and also gives a frame of reference. You know, people often say, oh, the Ignite Your Shine program. And I always say, it's not a program, it's a framework. Because programs come and go, programs are scripted. That's not what we do, we're a way of doing and being. And so you're adopting the language and philosophy. And so when teachers begin to do that and students begin to do that and families and staff in general, I mean, we always invite custodians and bus drivers and the lunch ladies and the office staff in because it takes everyone to create that. And so, you know, going, I think that just kind of creates the part of the conversation. But I also, we've been doing a lot of work with tapping into past stories, but in a safe way that people feel comfortable sharing them. Because going back to what we said earlier, is that it's not about having the same experience and saying, oh, well, I can't relate to you. It's the emotion that you can relate to. You know, there are things in life that I will never relate to. You know, I, because I, I'm not, that's not who I am or what I will ever experience. But at the same time, there are emotions that I can completely relate to and have that empathy. And I think the core for all of this is going to be to have empathy first. And so when we recognize that not everybody has our story, and I, I'll give you the example, the teacher that really, really unfortunately crushed my daughter, there were two major, major instances with him. And one was way more severe, actually, I should say, and I'm, I won't share that one at this point, but the one First one was my daughter has um, ADD and so she has a 504. And he said in front of the entire class when she said she needed extended time. And by the way, this is the first time she ever advocated for herself ever. She said to him, I, I have a 504, so it allows me additional time. And he said, average kid can do it in 20 minutes, sit down. And she goes, well, I don't know if you know, but I have the 504 and it does allow me the additional time. And he said, an average kid can do it in 20 minutes. You had the whole period to sit down. Well, that was the first time and the last time my daughter ever advocated for herself. And he did it so loud in front of the entire class. So my daughter walks home that day and she's sobbing and she calls me and she said, this is why I don't advocate for myself. 
And that was when she shut down. And so I ended up emailing the teacher and it was a really friendly email. Now, I, I will admit that in the beginning, the first part, I did say something like, she does have a 504 comma, a legal document. I may have put those little words in there. But outside of that, it really was a friendly email because I don't always know the teacher's story. You know, and so by my fast forward a little bit, he emails me back and it's the most unprofessional email I've ever seen in my entire life. And three times in there, he put uh, an average kid can do it 20 minutes, an average kid can do it 20 minutes, an average kid can do it 20 minutes. And all I kept thinking is, my daughter is an average. That's why she has a 504. But if any of your listeners love to read, I'm going to highly recommend the book, The End of Average by Todd Rose. And I love that book because he really explores what is average. And the bottom line is, as we set kids up every day in our education system, at least in the United States, we set them up as average. That's exactly what standards are. And so the book like changed my world because it was exactly what I believe in. And it finally put words and language to what I was trying to say. And Todd Rose is actually interesting himself because he is a high school dropout at the age of 18. And so again, high school dropout and 15 years after dropping out to current day, he is the director of mind, brain and education for Harvard university. So his book just showed again what I'm championing for, like, don't let life things determine who you are, what you can accomplish and what you can do. You get to determine that. So to be honest with you, Heidi, I've kind of lost the, of what the question was because I got on that passion roll. So if I didn't answer it, let me know. No, you, you did. And actually it's a twofold question and I only asked you the, the first portion of it. So the question was about how do we bring this conversation into schools? Um, and, and you, you told us that, but then my second question, uh, or the second part of that is, you know, what would the ideal outcome be? And I'm wondering if in that, maybe you can tell us a little more about the acronym of shine as well. Like what is, what do those letters stand for? Cause maybe that's the ideal outcome. I would assume since, since bringing shine to the schools is the way yeah. you think it, uh, we can bring those conversations there. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. The stories I get, the DMS, the emails of just the changes, like one of the cutest recently was on Twitter, someone had put out that a student who was going through Shine, this whole school is a Shine school, and they were at home, and the mom had a cloth lamp that was white, and she comes around, and it literally says Shine with a light bulb written on the lamp. <laughs> yeah, like that's a good outcome right there. But the mom was like, I couldn't even be mad, you know, because she, again, she knows the power of Shine, but yeah, so I mentioned S as self, and it's all about strengths, gifts, skills, and talents. But then we have heart and heart. So let me back up for a second, actually. For self, it's also about your mindset. It's about taking care of you. So S is the one that takes us always the longest to take people through and to really dig deep into that. Cause that's, a, I mean, you're talking about you, right? Sometimes there's a good amount of work that needs to be done. And because of whatever we're harboring and beliefs that we have created. And so then when we get to H, H is heart. And it is all about passion. Like what your why, you know, what excites you? What do you love to do? And that can be a deep why, or it can be a passion of I love to crochet. Like it literally can be anything you want it to be. And then, and it should be, but the two of those together are actually what's powerful. Because if you have a strength, right? So if I have a strength in something, but I'm missing the passion, then that I'm going to have burnout over time. But if I have the passion, but I'm missing the strength, right? That's not there. Then that's more like a hobby. Like I'm trying to do something that I'm not actually really good at. And that's okay, go for it. This is the, how you discover things. But Gallup research says that a strength will remain a strength, but a weakness will never become a strength. A weakness will never become a strength. So weaknesses will improve, but they'll never become one of our strengths. Yet we beat ourselves up so much over, I gotta get better at this. I can't do this. And how come I can't do it? Well, look at them. They're amazing at it. And they're rocking it out. And we do all of this okay, comparison instead of that self-reflection. So I is gonna be inspired. I mentioned that one before. So we have self, heart, inspire, because life's going to throw curveballs, whether it's something like as big as a pandemic we're in right now, or whether it's life events that happen, little or big. But how do you stay inspired and how do you inspire others? And then when we get to N, N is navigate. What are you going to do with everything that I just talked about? What are you do with your greatness, your passions, your inspiration? You've got all that, but you've got to take action. You're here for a reason. And that's where that impact comes from. And a lot of us get fulfillment because we're using that greatness about us. And then E is exceptional because you're becoming an exceptional person. You were meant to be, not anybody else who you were meant to be. So it is called Ignite Your Shine because it's all about taking that greatness that you have. We call you a lion of greatness at Ignite Your Shine and then implementing it to be you. 
And when you, when you're you, you impact others. I, I love that. And the one part that really is resonating with me right now is about your strengths and to leverage them and that everyone has a weakness. Um, that whole concept of average is really blowing my mind too. I've, I've thought a, a lot about that. And you know what, what we love to do is to really discover your strengths and to partner with other people so that way your weaknesses become irrelevant because they have different ones and you know putting together these teams having conversations collaborating co-creating that you are able to create something beautiful together um, i was having a conversation with one of my students and he said you know oh i have i have adhd but you know i tend to obsess about things and and you know he was saying like when i'm into something i just like become so focused and you know, he and I were, were chatting and I was like, oh, I, I, I can relate. Um, I said, can you predict when that happens? He goes, no, it's just spontaneous. It just, you know, I don't know when I'm going to get, you know, sucked into that rabbit hole and I just go for it. And I said, that's why, you know, if it, you know, you have this label to it, like it's a deficit, that's, that's just who you are. And, and that's, that's great. And there are some students who aren't maybe creative, but they, they can, they're dependable and, and they, you know, their executive functioning, they, they can just, you know, go along, chugga, 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 and, and make progress. And you, you, you put the two together and then you just have this, you know, power duo. And I, I wish that, you know, that's a big passion of mine was you know, to be able to have those types of conversations, like what's your superpower and what's mine and let's, let's create something awesome together. Yes. And I love that you foster that because that's what we need more of. I mean, if you want to go back to outcomes, that's the outcome is getting kids to recognize this and then to, to begin to embed that into their life, embed it with each other. Like, it's amazing that you know, we we're seeing classrooms who it's no longer having that bully or putting someone down or laughing at someone because they're not good at something. Instead, they're like, oh, you know what I'm really good at? Oh, you're not good at that? Well, let me help you, right? And vice versa. And that's the whole point. And that's what you are fostering by having that conversation. So yes, I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Great teachers right here. I can see it. <laughs> we love what we do, that's for sure. Um, and and I'm wondering, uh, Lavana, if you have any questions for Jennifer and I, we like to kind of wrap up our fabulous five questions with turning the table and giving you a chance to, to ask about us and, and learn a little bit more about us. Great, because I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I have shared my strengths like some of it, you can see the passion that I have here and some of the things that I love to do. So I'd love to put it back to you. Like, what are some of your strengths and passions? And I, I know you may be comfortable doing it. And if, you're, and if you're not comfortable doing it, let me just say that, you know, and you guys have been in my sessions before. So you've probably have heard me talk about the difference between confidence and arrogance. And, you know, arrogance is when you think you're better than somebody else. Confidence means that oftentimes you have you know your strengths, but you also know you have the weaknesses. You know you you recognize both, and so but unfortunately we cross the two between, and others are like oh look at them they think they're all that or they're they're bragging. It's not bragging. We we need to change that whole perception and recognize that people are just honoring who they are, just like they honor who you are. So as you two share, I would love to hear more about what are your S and your H. What are some of your strengths and passions? Heidi, would you like to go first or do you want me? Why don't you go? Um, I guess my passion right now is to create an atmosphere where people feel safe and empowered and to create these great moments for, for each other and of course around students. Um, and I think my, my strength is that I can see something and then become a visionary with it where there's an idea and then I can just like explode it into the future and, and see like, oh yeah, we could, we could take it, take it there. Um, so I think that's, that's mine. And what, what I, when I think when I do my best is when I'm paired with someone who's like a great project manager, it's like, I have the ideas and I have this vision and I get super excited about it and then they can come up with the ideas to implement it and make it happen. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, asking. when you have those, um, like those 
automatic pitching machines where they just throw balls at you so that the batter can just keep going. That's Jen with her ideas. <laughs> her ideas are the ball. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Heidi, what about you? I want to hear your strengths. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I think that, you know, my biggest strengths are probably um, having learned resilience and then perseverance. Um, I don't give up. I, I push through as much as I want to give up. There's a lot of times where I do. I just really just want to call it quits. I actually don't. Um, I can't, I can't seem to let myself, <laughs> like I get to this point where I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll give up right now and I'll just be low or down for a little while. And then, you know, I'm like, nope, this isn't working for me. I got to get back up and be passionate again. Um, and so, and so that's, um, that's probably my strength. And my passion is um, not just for students, but for people. And right now, uh, what I'm seeing in the world I, I see I see people out there really lifting each other up and supporting each other, but I also see the opposite. And, um, you know, in the last, I don't know, four or five years or so, there's been such a huge divide in our country. And I've watched people just like go at each other on social media and, you know, people who used to be friends, like we're no longer friends now because of this conversation we had on social media or just because I shared not me personally, but because somebody shared their belief, which I try not to do on social media because I don't think that's the place for it. But um, so what I'm passionate about is, is creating more empathy and acceptance and understanding of our humanness as a whole, as a, as a, as a, as a race, as a people. Um, and I feel like having that in schools is the way to do it because that's kind of our foundation, right? Um, so that's what I'm most passionate about today. And that's why um, I do the work I do as an ed consultant, you know, to try to bring more. And I love hearing about your shine framework and how that can come into schools and have the same result of what I'm passionate about. You know, any way I can bring that forward and, and spread that word um, and teach people, and then I have to let it go from there and just see if they take it. Yay, Heidi. Yeah. And and I'll say with Heidi, like she really, she believes it and she lives it. And I've been working with her for a while now. And, you know, one of her, what I see as a big strength with her is, is the mindfulness work. And she, she's very mindful in her relationships and, you know, she listens and reflects back and hears people and she's like that great. She's like the iron, like, and you know, cause life gets wrinkles sometimes and she's always the one that just smooths it out. Thanks Jen. That's why you guys make a great team. Mm-hmm. Thank you we so definitely much. do. We Letting definitely me do. put you under a, a little bit of a scope on that one. Cause I just, I do, I think it's, this is something we don't do enough is share the strengths that we have and then, or even talk about the passions or what our why. So thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. And, you know, it's, it's an absolute honor and delight and we're very, very grateful. And um, hopefully we might be able to work with some projects in the future and just um, we honor you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm wondering, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. ahead. I just say right back to you. I just, I really appreciate this opportunity because it's, it's nice to have deeper conversations and to to be around like-minded people. So thank you. And I'm wondering for our subscribers and viewers, uh, what's the best way for people to find you, Lavana? On any social media, it's at Lavana Roth, just like the name is here on Zoom. You can see it in the window. Um, at Ignite Your Shine, we're everywhere except Instagram is at Ignite Your Shine now. And so, otherwise, that if you want to reach out directly and DM me through there or Lavana at igniteyourshine.com. Okay. And also, um, you know, people can contact Jennifer and I, and we can connect them with you if, if that's a route that they want to go. I've got my email right there and Jen has hers down below. Um, 
it, it never works out. Where did my <laughs> finger go? Isn't where? <laughs> Uh, and we do hope that more viewers subscribe so that you can continue to hear these stories in education and these conversations because we have such amazing people like Lavana uh, come to us on a weekly basis just about um, and really trying to make that change in education. So thanks for being here, everyone. We're going to do our little closing. Lavana, if you want to hold up too, we could do that. <laughs> There's a, there you go here. Can you see my lips? We found that one. Yeah, it's good. Oh, yay! Got it. Thank All you. All right, guys. Thanks for coming, everyone.